Hi, and welcome back to another lesson. Today we're going to be learning the names of the black keys on the piano. Now before we do this, we need to remember or revisit the idea and the names of the white keys. So bear with me while I refresh your memory on that. If you do remember or have those memorized, you can go ahead and skip a few moments into the video where we start learning about the black keys. I'm going to start here with C. C is to the left of the group of two black keys. D is in the middle of the group of two black keys. E is to the right of two black keys. F here is to the left of three black keys. G is the middle left of three black keys. A is the middle right of three black keys. B is at the end or right of three black keys. And then we get back to C at the beginning of two black keys or the left of those two black keys. If you remember the names of your white keys, we're gonna use that information to figure out the names of the black keys. Now the rules for black keys are a little convoluted and confusing when you're starting out learning how to utilize them. So I'm not gonna go into the rules of it. I'm just going to give you the guidelines to figure out the names of the black key. And then as you learn a little bit more about theory, you can more thoroughly understand how you would change the names based on what I'm giving you. So first off, the black keys can have two names. I'm gonna talk about sharps first. You may have heard that term before, such as F sharp or C sharp, okay? And all this means is when I play a sharp note, I'm playing the letter C, for example. I'm playing the key that is a half step to the right of that note. So C would be here. A half step just means not a full skipping a note. I'm playing the very next note to the right. So, you know, C and D look like they're next to each other, but there's this black key that actually separates them. So C sharp would be a half step to the right of C. Here's D. D sharp is a half step right from D. Here's E. There is no black key between E and F. So a half step to the right just gives me F. F a half step right would give me F sharp. G, a G a half step right will give me G sharp. And I have A, A a half step to the right will give me A sharp. And then I have B, and B a half step right, there's no black key again, so there is just C. Important to notice that we didn't have an E sharp and we didn't have a B sharp. That's just generally how it's going to work. Let's go ahead and work the opposite direction. Instead of a half step to the right, we're gonna work backwards and go a half step to the left. And this is how we find the notes that are flat. So if I have a note, again, let's start with something simple such as B, and I was to go a half step left, that would be B flat. So B, here's B flat. I go to my next note, A. A, a half step to the left is A flat. Then I have G. G, a half step to the left, gives me G flat. Then I have F. F a half step left is gonna give me E, so there's no flat there. E a half step left gives me E flat. Then I have D. D a half step left is going to be D flat. And then I get to C. And C a half step left, there's no black key, so I just have a B note. And then it would start over that pattern again. B doesn't have a sharp and C doesn't have a flat. E doesn't have a sharp, F doesn't have a flat. So those are the basic, the most fundamental rules to figuring out what the names of the black keys are. In theory, we learn why you might call one sharp versus flat because having two names can be a little confusing. But for now, it's important that you understand that it can be either or, right? So A, sharp, half step right, is the same as B, flat, which is a half step back. And in music theory, you'll learn why. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something today, and I'll see you next time.